If you are brand new to creating and selling teacher resources and you are asking yourself, what the heck is Teachers Pay Teachers and do I need to start creating and selling resources on there, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how you can create a resource with a free tool called Canva, how you can download it, and then how you can actually upload it to your Teachers Pay Teacher store, even if you don't have one yet. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about the exact steps you need to take in order to make sure that you're actually successful on Teachers Pay Teachers, so make sure you stick around for that. So I am Lindsay Bowden, if you don't know me, I help teachers just like you, thousands of teachers all over the world, create and sell teacher resources on Teachers Pay Teachers and on other platforms as well. I will be honest, I'm actually a PowerPoint girl. I make all of my resources in PowerPoint. My niche for Teachers Pay Teachers is high school math. So I'll show you my resource store, my TPT store. I make geometry and algebra one resources and PowerPoint is way better for math resources. However, Canva is also incredible. So let's talk about pricing difference between those two programs, because I feel like when people are wondering about teachers pay teachers and wondering about creating and selling teacher resources, one of their first questions is typically what programs do I use? So PowerPoint and Canva are my two favorites. PowerPoint, in order to create resources to sell, you need the business version, and it's the version that is $8.25 a month. In order to sell with Canva, you can use the free version, just not the educator version. So there's three versions of Canva. Canva free, Canva for educators, and Canva pro. The only two that you can use for commercial use, which means you're using it to sell resources, is Canva Free and Canva Pro. So choose one of those. I personally love Canva Pro, and even though I don't create resources with Canva, I actually use Canva to create all of these graphics. So like this picture here, all of my graphics inside of my listings. So all of these pretty graphics are all created in Canva, and I'll show you that in a second. And I have the pro version and it's $119 per year. So it's about the same as PowerPoint. So I think either of those options are fine, but if you want to start with Canva free, that is also fine. So what you're going to do, if you don't have a Canva account is go to canva.com, create an account. Do not use anything related to your school. Use a separate personal email and don't do this on school time. You just want to keep everything separate because you are starting a business here and you don't want to miss business with your current job. Okay. Pro tip there. So create a separate Canva account. You can make a free account. If you want to upgrade to pro, I think that's a great idea. And then you're going to go to create a design. It's this purple button over here. I've already clicked it and it's going to open this up. You're going to go to custom size down here at the bottom and then eight and a half by 11 inches because that's a normal size sheet of paper. Now, if you're not in the US and you want to create like on A4, that's also fine. You would just need to Google what A4 is as far as like inches, but it's pretty similar. It's just a little bit smaller. So either one is fine. All right, create new design. And now we have this wonderful sheet of paper and we can start working. So the cool thing about Canva is they have a lot of clip art pieces that you can use for commercial use. So if you go to elements over here, I'm just going to do a board game and I'm going to click graphics, see all, and you can see all of the board game graphics over here. Now, if you'll notice some of them, actually a lot of them have the little crown. That means you can only use it if you have a premium or a pro account. So I have a pro account, so I can use that. And then you can, if you click on it, it'll move it to your paper and then you can just drag it out to make it bigger. So there are other options here. Let's see. I'm actually going to put game board. I believe I did this earlier and it gave me better options. There we go. Game board. So you might have to play around with what you're actually searching for. Game board it gives me better options for sure. Um, that one's nice. Um, let's see. This one's also nice. Some of them you can just drag diagonally. Some of them you can drag like vertically and horizontally. So I would probably start with something like that. But there's other options. I mean, you can kind of play around with it. This one's pretty complicated. But it is cool. Now, you could make this on a bigger sheet of paper and just tell teachers like this is kind of like a small poster paper, but honestly, I think eight and a half, eleven is fine. So pick the one that you want. You can even use one of the color ones. I would just also make a black and white version too, just for printing purposes. 
So they have lots of options. Now, what you have to do as far as Canvas terms of use, you couldn't sell this by itself. You can't sell a piece of clip art on a page by itself. You have to just add things to it, okay? So as long as I am adding things to this, then it's fine for commercial use. That is what Canvas terms of use say. I have a whole nother video on Canva for TPT. I will put it right up here. So after this video, open that in a separate browser and watch that one next, okay? So what we wanna do then is we wanna add a title. So if I type T, it will open a text box and I can call this um, CPC site words game. Okay. Now, obviously I make high school math resources like I told you guys, but I feel like in a lot of my videos, everyone is saying, you always show math resources. Can you show something else? So I'm gonna try my hand at a elementary one, okay? Because my daughter is learning sight words right now, so it's fresh on my mind. So I'm gonna put that right there. And you can obviously make this as complicated or as simple as you want, but I will say, if you're gonna be selling something, I would get some inspiration, don't copy, but get some inspiration and kind of see what your competition is on TPT because you can't just throw up a simple game board and expect it to sell by itself. In fact, if you're gonna be creating something like this, I would probably create multiple versions and sell like a pack of games so you can charge a little bit more, like 450 maybe. I do have some information about pricing. If you follow me on Instagram and send me the word price, I'll send you my info on how to price your products. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I'm going to find a picture of a cat. So I'm thinking CVC words. Let's do, let's think about like ones that are all cat, bat, that kind of thing. You can also, if you have like purchased clip art from TPT, you can upload clip art, your own clip art. Okay, let's do bat. So I would just keep filling this out. Let's see, Matt, and adding it to my board. I won't make you guys watch me do all of this, but you get the idea. And then you can add some other things like uh, go back to spaces. Um, at the one that's at the end, you can say finish, start up here. And by the way, I'm just clicking and uh, duplicating. So Command D or Control D will duplicate. Keep ahead. Now just be aware, like when you're listing this, this is not a game they could kids could play by themselves unless you like explain because these kids can't read all these words yet, right? Because they're just learning their sight words. So just like make sure you are clear in the description, like they'll need some help with an adult to play this. Okay, and then you can keep adding pictures. I would fill them all in. Okay, and then you can add some instructions up here and they can even write it because I mean, this would be practicing sight words, right? So maybe they can write it or you could have like another sheet where you have all of the sight words listed and they have to match it. So there's lots of different ways you can do this, okay? And so they roll their die and let's say they get here, that's a bat. They have to find the word bat and then it's the next person's turn. So lots of different ways you can do games, okay? And I have made games for all different kinds of levels. There are lots of options here, but once you kind of finish out your game, then I would add a few things. I would add some teacher instructions. So like, how do you play this? Cause you want to make it as easy as possible for teachers to print this out, laminate it and go. Um, they don't have to laminate it, but because it's a game board, if it was like a worksheet, they wouldn't laminate it. But for this, they're going to be using it every year, right? So how do they play it? I would play it in your classroom if you're a teacher and see like where does kids get confused and add that to your teacher notes or adjust it so that you know, okay, this is going to go well. If you are not in the classroom, then find a colleague, a teacher friend and ask them, hey, can you play this? Or if you have kids, play it with your kids. But I wouldn't use something that you haven't actually used yourself to make sure that it works, especially with a game when things could go wrong. So I would add some teacher instructions. I would just add a little and then step one so like list out every little thing because you all know teachers are tired like we don't want to have to figure it out tell us what to do if we're buying this we want it to be print and go ready to use okay so once you have all that done then you can download it as a PDF I would do PDF print since they're printing it and I would flatten it because that ensures that they can't edit it and then I would download it and then you're gonna to go to Teachers Pay Teachers, and if you don't have a store yet, then you need to open an account. So if you already have an account, like you're already a buyer on Teachers Pay Teachers, then you can use that same account, and that's fine. Unless you're using your school email, and then I would maybe separate that, or just change the email on the account. If it's like an account that your school set up for you, I would keep that separate, okay? So make a sign in, and then you need to sign up for an account. Now there's two options with TPT. You can sign up for the basic seller account, which is a one-time fee of $29, or you can sign up for a premium, which is a yearly fee of 60. I would highly recommend the premium. 
I know that that sounds like a lot of money when you're not making any money yet, but with the premium, you get to keep 80% of your earnings. So you're going to earn back that $60 a lot faster than if you sign up for the $30 one, it's going to take you a lot longer to earn that 30 back. Okay. So that's just my pro tip. I would sign up for the premium. As long as you sell $5 worth of things per month, then you're going to make that money back. Now it might not happen in the first month or the second month, but the more you upload quality resources, the better that's going to get. And then all you have to do is once you have a store, then you can go to add new product, and this is a digital download. Pretty much everything you're going to upload is a digital download because you're not like printing something off and mailing it to someone. They buy it and then download it on their computer and then they can print it off if they want. So digital download. Then you put the title. You're going to put the file that you just downloaded right here. You add some different things. So let me show you previews, thumbnails right here. It's going to say it's going to auto generate thumbnails. You don't want to do that. You want to upload your own and you need four different pictures here. You need a cover in three thumbnails. So this is what I'm talking about. Cover, that's the first thing they see. Three thumbnails is why they should buy it. Now I actually make all of those in Canva. I made a new design and this size is 2800 by 2800. Create a design, custom size. So this is pixels, not inches, obviously. <laughs> pixels, 2800 by 2800, create new design. And then I made all of this with with the Canva elements. So I would just take a screenshot of what I just made. Command Shift 5, take a screenshot. Boop. That's gonna go on your desktop. I'm on a Mac, so if you are on a PC, you would use what's called a snipping tool. I'm gonna delete these little guys. And I'm gonna drag and drop it. And you can kind of make it a little slanted, make it big. I like to make it kind of pop. Now, if you made more than one game, which I said, I would not just sell one game by itself. I don't think that's going to be worth your time. I would sell a pack so that you can charge more for it. Then you could have like, you know, pretend this is two games. You can kind of have it like this. There we go. You could change the title up here. You want your title to be big and bold. You could put games if you had like a digital version, or you can just put um, like, why would they want to buy it? fun activity. You can probably think of a better way to say that. And then you would download this as a picture. And that would go here. Then you could make three more little squares talking about why they would like it. Is it print and go? Are teacher instructions included? Is the answer key included? Which on this one, I wouldn't really need an answer key, but if it did, is that included? Yes, you should always put an answer key. Then you would write a description. So like, what is it? So here's my description comprehensive resource, what's included, duh, duh, duh. how many pages, is it aligned with standards? So that would go in the description. Then you could price it, put what grade it's for, and then just make sure to fill out basically anything that you can fill out. If there's something to fill out, fill it out. The more information you give buyers, the better. Let's see, the only other thing I forgot to talk about is the preview. So previews I also make in Canva. So let's look at that and then we'll be good to go. And then I want you to watch that Canva video next. So previews are a different size. They are, or mine is, 16 inches by 9 inches. Previews are kind of like your thumbnails, but more information. So like what's included, the topics covered, why they'll love this. If you have any testimonials, which if you're new, you won't yet, but you can go back and add those later. So my preview for this one, see it's right here, view preview. What's included, why they'll love it. It includes a video lesson. Here are the topics covered, let's print and go, and then some testimonials. So it's just even more information. So on every single listing, you need a cover, three other pictures saying why they like it, a preview file, and your preview file, actually when you download it, you download it as a PDF, not a picture. So it's a PDF. You need your title, what is it called? You need your description, and then all the other information filled out. Now, there are some very important things you need to know about titles and descriptions and what to include on your covers and what to include in your thumbnails. I have a training specifically about that. So I want you to go to lindsaybowden.com slash training and check that out. It is your ticket to be successful on Teachers Pay Teachers. I have helped thousands of teachers start and grow their store and I know I can help you do the same. All right. I hope this was helpful. Go ahead and watch the next video and sign up for that training.